So you're familiar really on the Unifans, the process for joining these together is very similar to previous version, just a matter of lining them up together like this and pushing into place. One new feature you'll notice with these fans is there is a screw covers to make them look a little bit tidier. You are able to get your nail into here to pull the little rubber pad off and that opens up the screw hole. So you'll notice the screw hole is actually recessed into the rubber pad. And the big advantage of this is if you've got 25 millimeter fans with your AIO, which is the most common type, you are still gonna be able to use the standard radiator screws to mount these fans, even though they are 28 millimeters thick. And that's because the screw hole is actually recessed into the fan. So I'm just gonna put the little rubber pad back into place. Now we've got one of the little connectors to go on to the fans, just a matter of lining it up and pushing into place to secure it. Again, one of the new features that Leon Lee have got is it is possible to change the direction this cable comes off. If you wanted to go over to this side, just a matter of freeing it up here and then sliding it in under the little clip on the other side. Just taking care that you don't dislodge the cable as you do it. On the other side of the fans, we still are able to twist off these little connectors here. Just a matter of twisting them around and pulling them off. And that's going to give you a nice flat surface if you are mounting these on a radiator. In terms of connecting up the TL LCD fans, each controller can support up to a maximum of six of the LCD fans. So that's two groups of three into two different ports on the controller. And the controllers between the LCD and non-LCD TL fans work with each other. So you can mix and match the fans, but you can't actually join a non-LCD fan to one that has an LCD screen on it. They have to go into separate ports on the controller. So I've also got three non-LCD TL Uni fans, and I've got the reverse versions of these, and I'm gonna be installing these down at the bottom set to intake. So you can see the main difference is there's no LCD screen in the middle of them. Um, the other difference that you'll notice is we've got these little plastic tabs on the side, which we can push them down. And the idea behind these is these gold pins, they worry about you actually being able to get a short if they were to touch a metal part of your case. So on the end that you're not actually going to be putting a connector on, they recommend that you leave the plastic tab in place. So we'll go ahead and get these uni fans connected up. And onto the end, we can take our connector, push it into place. And again, if we want to change the orientation of the cable, we can move it over to here. We're also going to be able to twist these little connectors off at the end. And what is important to mention, the cables are different between the LCD and non-LCD versions. So it is important to take care not to mix them up. And if you look closely down at the bottom of the fans, you'll see it says TLLED, indicating that they are for the LED version of the fans. The, T the other ones say TLLCD, so it's important not to mix the cables up. So unlike the LCD versions of the fans where you're limited to three fans per port, you can actually plug 10 of the non-LCD fans to one port on the controller. To do that, you can daisy chain the fans together. There's this connecting cable that comes with the fan, so it's just a matter of pushing it into place and then on here as well. And that's going to allow you to group fans together. You might be worried about powering all 10 of the fans. And what Lee and Lee recommend, if you're powering more than six of these off one port, you should plug a SATA cable into the end of the fans. So we've got this additional cable. It's got a connector on one end and a SATA cable on the other. And it's just a matter of lining it up and then pushing it into place. And this should plug into a SATA cable coming from your power supply. But for us today, we're just going to need three of these joined together with one cable coming from them. And then finally, I've got a forward facing LCD fan for the rear of the case. And then we can secure our fans to the fan brackets. Next thing to do is install our Unifan controller. And as you can see, it's got one, two, three, four ports on it. Um, in terms of the cables coming from the ports, they're all plugged in already. So we've got a four pin PWM connector. We plug that into a PWM header on our motherboard. It's gonna allow us to have motherboard control. Similarly for the three pin five volt RGB connector, it's gonna allow us to use motherboard sync to control the lights on the fans. We're gonna to need to connect the USB cable to a USB 2.0 header on our motherboard. In terms of powering the hub, this time we've got a six pin PCIe cable rather than the older hubs that had SATA cables on them. So before we put our fans in down at the bottom, it does make sense to get the cables coming from our hub plugged in. 
So we've got a PWM connector here down the bottom of the motherboard, so I'll bring the PWM cable through, line it up with the header, and push into place. Next to it, we've got an ARGB header, so we'll line the cable up, push into place, and we'll pull the excess cable through to the back. We've got two spare USB 2.0 headers here, so I'm just gonna plug the USB cable coming from our hub into one of them. And at the back of the case, we need to plug a PCIe cable coming from our power supply into the PCIe cable coming from our hub. Just before we set our bottom fans into place, I'm just gonna feed the cable coming from them through to the back of the case. And then we can set the fans up and into place and secure them into place at the bottom with the thumb screw. We can set our side fans into place. And again, we'll just feed the cable through to the back of the case. And we can set a single fan into place at the rear and screw it in from the back. Then we just need to plug our fans into the controller. So I'm going to plug our bottom fans into port number one, our side fans into port number two, and our rear fan into port number three. So to control our fans in our I.O., we're going to need to download Lian Lee's L Connect. You're going to go ahead and download and install it. And when you open it up, you're going to have your system information displayed. Now, this is a beta version of the software. Our I.O. isn't showing up in it. It's just for the fans. Um, when you get the version that releases on the day the fans are available, it will be able to control both your I.O and your fans. So I'm not going to be able to show you the I.O. setup today, but I have done that in a previous video and I'll put a link to that video in the description if you want to know how to set up and control your I.O. And today I'm just going to focus on our fans. So when you load up Lian Lee's L Connect, you've got all our system information being displayed here. And there's two different things to set up. There's the lighting on the fans and also the display on the LCD screen, if the fans have that. And the other thing is the fan control in terms of speed and settings. So we'll make a start with the fan control first of all. Okay, so we've opened this up, we can see our three groups of fans. We don't have anything plugged into channel number four. Into channel one, it's the non-LCD fans at the bottom, which is recognized. And our two LCD fans are into channel two and channel number three. So we click on channel one, we can see it's running off the standard fan and curves reacting to the CPU temperature, which is currently 38 degrees. That's our current fan speed and it's the 120 millimeter um, size of fans. We can adjust things over here, very similar to what we did with the previous uni fans. So if you want to go with a quiet fan profile, it's gonna change the curve. Um, if we want to add the start stop mode in, you'll see here, below a certain speed, the fans don't spin at all and then only kick up after that. Or if we want to have it reacting to the GPU temperature, because these are the fans at the bottom, we can do that. And we can also make our own fan curves to save it to this fan, we would just click apply. To save it to all the fans, we would click apply to all. Um, I'm planning on doing some thermal testing and I want all the fans running in their stock settings before I do that. So I'm just gonna leave them at stock. The other option we have, we want to sync the fans up to our motherboard because we have plugged that PWM cable in. All we would need to do is turn this on. This will disable the fan profile here and it will just run off the standard motherboard fan curves and you can see our fan speed has changed here. Again, if we want to control the LCD fans, it's exactly the same settings that we have here. Okay, so moving over to take a look at our lighting, it's the TL fan utility that we're going to want to go to. Um, we can see our fans are currently set to rainbow. And one of the nice things it's now doing is it seems to pick up the number of fans that are in each group. So you can see group one is the fans at the bottom, we've got three of them. Group two are LCD fans on the side, there's three of them. And then if we click on group number three, that's our rear fan and there's only one of them. So previously on the Unleased L Connect, you had to set the number of the fans up. So it's nice that this is being done for you. So we can see at the moment, our fans are currently set to rainbow and adjusting the colors of the fans is exactly the same as what you would have done previously. You've control over the different aspects of the fans and you've all these different effects. So if I click on runway and click on apply, 
you'll notice that our fans at the bottom have changed to runway with these particular colors. And if I wanna change the colors, it's just a matter of clicking on the color that I want and painting it into these two colors at the bottom. If I want to apply this to all the fans, it's easy. You just click apply to the, and select the controller and click apply. And you'll notice that now all the fans in our case will have changed to runway with these current colors. So you can experiment with all these different colors. I think for me, I'm just gonna go with a static color and I'm happy with the red and blue, so I'm just gonna click apply to all and click apply. And that's the fans in terms of the colors set up just the way I want them. So while we're currently on the non-LCD fans, we don't really have any other options. We can, we can of course pick our fan profile from here or the lighting effects, but that's what these fans are limited to. If we select a group of our LCD fans, we do have a few different options here. So we have our LCD screen, which we can set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. And you can see at the moment, it is the Lian Li logo. But if we look in our build, the Lian Li logo is currently round the wrong way. So we do have this little button here that we can press. And that's turned the fan now round the right way. If we want to, if it wasn't still right, we can keep rotating it. So I'm just gonna rotate them all round. And then if we go over to our rear fan, and rotate it round as well. So now that we've got all our fans round the right way, we can customize what comes up on the fans and we've got a number of different options. So we can have pictures, we can have a GIF, we can have an MP4, or we can have them as sensor panels. So we've shown you one of the pictures which is loaded in as default. What we can do is add our own picture. So I'm gonna click on add. Um, I have uploaded my logo to the pictures. I can click on the logo and click on open. So you'll notice that my logo is now appearing on our top side fan. And what we can do is we can customize each of these fans differently. So you can have the logo appearing on Pacific fans or you can sync them to them all. So if I want the logo to appear on all the fans um, or two of them, if I wanted to appear in two, I can select another one, select the logo. And that's gonna have my two fans as my logo and the Andy logo in between. Or what I can do is sync them to all by clicking here. And you'll notice that the logo has now appeared on all the fans. The only one it hasn't appeared on is our rear fan, and that's because you're gonna to have to set up the groups separately. So we can click on the logo. So going back to a group of three fans, so that's a picture, you can add whatever you want and have a different picture in each of the fans and have full control over it. Um, we can also do a video. Um, I don't have any gifts saved, but we'll go to an MP4, and you're gonna add your video as well. So let's start off with my uh, intro, so we'll click on it and it's gonna take a wee while just uploading it to the fans, and then it's gonna start playing on the fan. Again, if you wanna sync that to all the fans, just click Sync to All LCD, and you'll notice it'll now start playing on that whole group of fans. We can take it a step further, and we can actually have a video playing. So here's a video of my Lian Li O11 Vision build, so we'll click on it and click on Open. Again, it's a bigger file, so it's gonna take a little bit longer to upload. And then now you've got the video appearing in the individual fan. So another really cool option is the sensor panel. So we select the fan that we want to change. Um, so we can have that as our CPU temperature. And again, we have different styles that we can pick. So it's currently style one. We can change the text color. If we want the text color of each of the items to be different, we can do that. So let's pick the end one. Let's paint it in as a red. And you notice the text below the um, temperature has changed to red. Um, I think it actually looked quite good as white, so we'll put it back to white. And the sensor color itself, it's currently a blue. So again, we can change that to something different if we want. Let's pick a purple. And there's different styles as well. So we can click on style two, for example. And that has everything set to blue. Um, if you don't like that, again, go in and change the text. So let's paint it in as white. So I think actually style one looked the best. And this is obviously a beta version. Whenever I go back to it, it seems to always change the color back to blue for everything. Um, I imagine by the time it releases, they'll have these issues ironed out. Okay, so we've got one fan, that's a CPU temperature. Let's go down to the next one. Let's make it a GPU temperature. And if we go down to the third one, we've got a few different things. We could do a CPU load, GPU load, our fan rev per minute, and that's gonna be of the fan that's currently being displayed. 
So let's go for CPU load. And then if we want to go to our rear fan, select the screen, and we'll go for it for GPU load.